Hey guys, it's Kayla. So I want to give you free plans for the sewing table that I have my husband built for me. Kind of want to go over how I decided on the size of this table, the size of that table, and why I did what I did. So I set up one of those lifetime folding tables and that's how I kind of decided what size of a table that I wanted. This table is specifically only for sewing. I do have a separate table for cutting and I have one of the small big mat surfaces that way I can cut over here for little projects. I have a big ironing board that I used a coffee table to build and then I have my small ironing board over here to iron the small projects on. So I figured out what size table I wanted and I wanted it to be 30 inches deep and six foot wide. The melamine board was one of the most expensive parts of this project because one piece of melamine board is $44. So I only wanted to use one and I don't have a whole lot of room to play around with down here in my sewing studio. So I wanted to kind of keep everything small but movable. Movable is very important. So I brought my husband downstairs and told him the height and the width and the length of every table that I needed built. Essentially, whenever you're trying to figure out the height of the table for you, you want to be sitting straight in your chair with your lap parallel to the ground. And whenever you put your hands on your work surface, you want your elbow to be at a 90 degree angle. And that's how you figure out the height of your table. The lifetime table is the right height for me. So that's the height that we base this table off of. If you're shorter or taller than me, I am five foot eight, you may want to adjust your numbers just a little bit. Once we had the sizes of everything figured out, I went to Lowe's to buy my material. And I did end up buying too much, but that's better than not enough. The first problem I ran into was they didn't have enough table legs, but the table legs that they did have, if I were to go that route, it would have been three and a quarter inches by 35 inches tall. So we'd have to cut them down. It would have been $319.84 just for two tables. The legs that were the right height were only an inch and three eighths around. And so that would have been too wobbly to begin with. But if I did go that way, it would have been $63.84. What I decided to do was buy four by fours and cut the legs out of those. To make all eight table legs, it cost $49.08. So we decided that I wanted my sewing machine four inches from the front of the table and 18 inches from the side of the table. And then we laid out some freezer paper because I have a whole bunch of it from doing other projects. So I laid out the freezer paper and he traced around the machine with a permanent marker. That way he could have a template to cut out a hole in the top of this table. So then we had to make the legs. And like I said, each leg was cut at 28 inches and four per table. And then the, the apron pieces were cut at 62 and a half inches and at 20 inches and 15 sixteenths for the sewing table. Way that you make the extra table is the same exact way that this sewing table is made minus the cutout in it, or you could put a cutout in it. So he wanted to use a Craig jig so he could attach the apron piece directly to the four x four instead of putting it on the front and the side to where you could see these screws, which didn't matter to me either way, but he is a carpenter. That's the way he wanted to do it. If you want to make your table without a Craig jig, then you just add a little bit, what, probably four inches on each side. So you can just screw directly into the leg. All of the apron pieces and the support pieces were attached by a Craig jig and with glue. He put a spacer underneath of the apron piece. That way it would be not right next to the very end of the four x four. Held everything together with a clamp while he was screwing it. That way it didn't uh, shift. Once you get the rectangle part of the table made, then you have to put support pieces in. Essentially what we did is where the machine is set down in the table, there is a support on either side to hold the piece of melamine board, which was an extra cut off of this table to hold it up underneath. That way there was a shelf underneath of the hole to hold the sewing machine 
but with plenty of support. So the spacing on the supports is not really super important, just as long as you have enough room to put your sewing machine down in between the supports. And then once the bottom shelf has been made, we, would, we sat my sewing machine down in the hole so we could mark where each one of the pieces need to be drilled out so I can plug things in, my power cord, my foot pedal, and to put my knee lift. So we got the holes drilled on the support pieces for the stuff to be plugged into the machine. Then he traced the pattern of the cutout that we had made and so then he drilled a hole with a drill and then cut out the shape with a jigsaw. And then you have to sand the inside of the melamine to keep everything smooth. And then I just had some felt laying around that I glued to the inside of the hole. That way, nothing hard rubbing against my sewing machine if my sewing machine were to shift inside of the hole. The melamine top, it was glued down to be put on top of the frame and then he used the Craig jig to put the screws into the top. And then he put these wooden pieces around the edge of the melamine board to give it a finished look and I stained and varnished it really quickly and make a completed table. So I did make blueprints for these tables. I am not a blueprint maker, so if it doesn't make sense, then just leave a comment down below. These are not to scale, but it will give you an idea of the uh, the design of this table. I think that I covered everything with this. If I left anything out that doesn't make any sense, please leave a comment below. And if you do end up making this table or a table from these plans, can you please tag me in it on uh, you know either TikTok or Instagram? That way I can see it because I love being able to provide these free resources, but I just kind of want to see if you make anything with it. And here's a quick video of the beginning stages of my quilt room remodel. Hopefully I'll have another video out before too long with my finished product. I'll see you guys next time.